Okay, I'm trying to finish this motor up. Getting tired. Is it going on four o'clock, four a.m. All right, uh, we're gonna put the shovel heads on. So I got my stuff lined up here. We need um, got my speed wrench. For putting the bolts in. Got the torque wrench and the torque adapter for the seven sixteen thread. Got the intake manifold to line the heads up and the clamps, no rings to put it on there with. So, those are already put together, so they're ready to go together. Looks like I'm missing the uh, O-rings for here. <sighs> Turn. Thought I already had those out. Obviously they're not out. Okay. Well, I know where there's some more. Yep, there. I know there's more. Got plenty of them. Hundreds of these things. You may have thousands of them. Yeah, whatever. They're good ones. They don't wear out. Okay. These are Evo style push rods here. So this stuff's all going to go together at one time to make it all work. So we're going to have to make sure we do this correctly. First thing we need snow rings. Four new ones. Let's do the rear one first. Oh, the front one. Looks like we're on the front one. Okay. Some people get confused on how to put a do a valve adjustment push rod. So right now we're gonna make it simple for you. We're at top dead center almost for both cylinders. Only one of these is on compression stroke, the other one's on overlap stroke. So the way you tell which one's which is you look at the lifters. If the lifters are down and not moving, you're on the firing stroke. That'd be compression stroke. If the lifters are up and the piston's up, that means you're on the overlap stroke. That means both valves are open. There's no firing going on here. The power's on this one. Next time around, this one's on compression stroke. This one's on overlap stroke. So right now we got a wrench over here. If you watch, when I move this here, these are going to move. And these are not moving down here, see. And the piston just went down, and this one here is now up. It just started going down too. See, these are still moving. These are not moving. We're way past top dead center. <clears throat> so I'll reverse this. Bring this back up to top. I'm going to go a little bit past and come back down. Okay, so these are moving, if you're looking at these. And these over here are not moving, so this is on the compression stroke. See, no movement. Piston's coming up. No movement. Piston's all the way up. It just stopped. Okay. So this is on the firing. It's firing right now. There'd be flame in here right now if we had the head on it. These are not moving, so they're all the way down. So this is when you adjust both of these valves right now. Because I want the valves closed when this thing fires. I don't care about any time else. When the piston fires, I want the damn valves closed. So I adjust them right there. These two here, if you adjust them right now, these are both open right now. And you're in the wrong spot. It'll make all kinds of noise if you have it adjusted there. Okay, here's these O-rings. I'll go over here and make sure these are in there. A good time to know they're in there is to put them in right now. Then you won't have to forget about it. And these are in there pretty good, so don't come out. Now, these are for an Evo. And these are actually for an Evo Sportster because they're made out of silicon instead of a regular material. Blacks are up. So these go in there right now. <clears throat> the shovel head O-ring is tight in the rocker box but loose on the push rod. These big fat O-rings are tight in both. <clears throat> so this cover here is actually tight inside that O-ring right now so it doesn't move around. If you had this thin one that was for Harley for the shovel head and sports, the iron head sporties, this would drop in. It could float all over the place. It can actually catch on the O-ring and cut the thing right in half pretty easy. These ones here, they just pop right down because it's centered. 
So that's the one I always use. I always take out the rings that come with them. The stock all rings are real thin like these ones here. So, so that is how we do it. We put the Evo ones in there. Big improvement. Except if you want a higher temperature O-ring, use an Evo Sportster O-ring. They're higher temperature than the regular ones. Twin cams, they got them all. They got yellow, green, and brown O-rings. I have no idea what the other are made out of. <coughs> I don't know. They're color-coded for some reason, maybe. I think it's like having a rainbow going on. Okay. <coughs> Damn. Throat. I just haven't drank anything all day. Maybe it has something to do with it. Okay, I want to check my push rod length, so I got a push rod checking tool. It's called a workbench. Okay, how many lengths do we got here? Looks like we got three. Basically, we got four almost. But three is how many we're supposed to have, it looks like. So when you look at the adjuster down here at the bottom, these two here are equal. Those are the intakes. Now we got one short one and one long one. The long one is the front exhaust. The other one is the other exhaust for the rear. So these are the exhausts. So lay them out on the bench like they go. So camera. It's easier just to show it to this way. So the valves go exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So you lay them out. So you got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm used to flathead motors where you have multiple valves. One buried under here somewhere. So you have four cams. So you got one, two, three, four. That's how they work. So I always lay everything out one, two, three, four. That way you don't get confused. It makes perfect sense. And if you know where you're at, you don't get confused. So these go together real easy. We're going to need our push rods to cover at the same time. So I'll get to put those out right now. Like I said, we're going to have to put all this, the head, this, and all this assembly goes down at one shot. So, so i got to lubricate the tips of these and everything at one deal. And put the head down. Wonderful. The problem is with all the push rods in here, it's going to be hard to torque the valves, the heads. That's going to be fun. But oh well. Okay, I'm going to use the James uh, Fancy Dancy Head Gaskets. These are, they go on dry. Make sure you put them in the correct direction. We can take these off now because the bolts are on now. Okay, make sure you line up the holes so they line up. That one don't line up that way. Flip it over. Still didn't line up. Now we're on hole. There we go. Now they all line up. Quick and simple. Okay, so I need to put a little bit of lubricant on the push rod tips here. There we go. They should be loose. They are. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate these while I'm at it. Push rods are all lubricated and still lined up one, two, three, four. So I haven't changed them any. If you're in doubt, go ahead and line them up real quickly so you know for sure. Never hurts to check. So two short ones are in the middle, short, long for the long ones. There you go. They're lined up still the same. Okay. So this head goes up onto the motor. Push rods have to go in right now, so we're going to do the intake first because it's the hardest one to get to. See, that doesn't fit. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do it this way, but oh well. So I'm going to lift the head up, put the push rods in holes where they belong. Drop the head back down. Everything's in 
in where they belong. Let's get a head bolt in here so we know everything's lined up. And now it can't fall off. Okay, push rods are loose. So we know they're not bound up. So we have plenty of movement on them. So we know we're good to go. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put the rest of the bolts in here and work around everything that's in the way because there's going to be a lot of junk in the way right now. These are a nice performance push rod setup, but they're a pain in the ass to work on. So now I got to do everything I got to work around them because normally I don't have the push rods in here. I can work on it a lot easier. But now we're going to have a problem. Okay, I'm moving up my head bolts so I get oil on the threads so I can torque them. Okay, spin this around so I can get to the other holes over here I need to get to. Okay, take my quarter drive ratchet. I shaved this down so it fits better. I've also buffed this here so it's not sharp, so if you're banging stuff, it doesn't hurt it. And that gives you a nice little speed wrench to put these up in there with. For now, I don't want to get them all up there all the way. I just want to get them all started up there a few turns. At least I know they're all up on there. Get a little on my fingers, which makes my tool slide. Movement on that thing in there. <laughs> I went that up until it just touched, but I did not torque it. Same on that one. So those two are torqued over there, so I go to the next one, which is in this middle on this side. It pulls the head down evenly, otherwise you're going to cock the head a little bit if you go around the other way. Now you can cut the two side ones. All the bolts are up until they're touching right now. Okay, you have a little bit of movement on the head. So you want to rotate it toward the inside so both heads kind of rotate like this. So basically I just pull on it. So you can go back and forth a little bit. So I put a twist on it. I'm pushing hard where my palm, palm is making it rotate. And I can tighten the bolt down just a little bit. Pattern. Go back to the center one over here next, and then down here. Okay, 
torque here. So that's only like five, six foot pounds of torque, not much. Okay, the head's totally rotated in right now, so the intake manifold is closest together. When you rotate the heads like that, they get close to the flanges. So this intake will be tight, hopefully. Goes in there right like this. You get this is in the way here too. So it's not lining up where this, this is not where it needs to be to make it work. So I'm going to loosen this up a little bit, which doesn't surprise anybody. Sure don't surprise me any. This is totally in the wrong spot for the manifold to go on. Hmm. Not sure where that needs to be, but don't need to be where it is. If I flip it around 180. And this here would be offset instead of being here, it'll be way the hell over here, but that'd probably be too far. See, right now, if you put that right there, see, it doesn't line up with the spigot. It's not gonna let me put the manifold where I need to be either. If you put it in there this far, see, you're way too deep that way, so it's not really correct either way. So, more than likely, it's probably gonna have to be bent somewhat to get what we need. And I think this needs to be readjusted here also for the height. Because we're uh, everything's a little bit lower than it used to be, I think. So more than likely, we're going to have to do some playing with this with this mechanism. So for now, I need to loosen this Allen up a little bit. Times a row, I've guessed wrong on Allen's. That means I'm getting tired. So now I can adjust this up and down. Mounting bolts for the intake. And we're just way in the wrong spot. It's like not even close. There's how you fix it. Get it out of the damn way. Now it won't be a problem. Okay, so I'm not going to adjust these right now. I'm going to leave them loose. Oh, yeah. Oh, tired. Let's see. I don't really want to load on this cover while I'm trying to adjust the manifold. So I'm going to leave these loose. So I'm going to rotate the motor over. They're going to go up and down a little bit. This one's opening up right now. This piston's starting to come up. This one just opened up over here. We're top dead center right now, so now I can put these put this one all together on this side now.
this head. Like that. So let's put this one up on here. We gotta get these two valves in here. I'm gonna leave that off. Okay, which push rod's which? This is the intake like it's supposed to be. Put it in there. Exhaust like it's supposed to be. Okay, let me pick this up. Put one in there, put the other one in there. Drop the head down. Find your head bolt, rotate until it goes in. Try to get it started so the head won't fall off. Loose, loose, so they're both loose, that's a good sign. Okay. Get some bolts in here. Okay. I'll start. There we go. Drag my ass. around don't grab anything it's gonna come off this one over here oh I know what I forgot to do what I was gonna do seems getting too damn tired to remember everything okay I gotta put this cross tube in here I forgot to do it okay this one's really short so it fits that means it'll probably leak I'm just gonna put a nut on there to hold it this one here goes in here. This one doesn't fit. Lift it up. No, it does. Okay, good thing I didn't forget. All right, one more thing in the way. Need lots of stuff in the way. These aren't going to go all the way under, it's going up you know, half, three quarters of the way up, whatever. I don't know. I'm not exactly counting here. Binding a little bit there. See how quickly this ratchet makes things go together. I got clearance in the head, so I'll rotate it that direction. Now this head bolt's loose. <laughs>
this one. The third leg of the triangle. Right here. Two side ones. And then the back one here. Yeah, it's just blown up or what? I think we're just way too close to the problem. Okay, that one's all right. Too much mean on up the motor. Oh, yeah. oh they're loose. They're loose. Perfect. Okay, so we've pulled down a little bit right now. Now we got to see if this manifold is going to fit. I didn't port the manifold either. I didn't have time to. We'll have to worry about that later. I'm too tired to do it tonight. Another hour of work, I could probably do it, but not right now. Okay, so right now it looks like the front head lines up and the back head is too far rotated inward. So I'm going to try to show you that, but I don't have a lot of. So you put the manifold on there, so try to figure out which head is lined up. See how the rear one is too far inward, and the front one looks like it's lined up fairly decent. If I line up the rear one, the front one is right there, but see where the rear one's way off, so I gotta kick it out to line it up. So right now it's kicked all the way this way, it needs to come this way, so I need to push on this side to go that direction. This one here is bottomed out, and looks like it's probably okay the way it is. So I just take a hammer and tap on it a little bit, <clears throat> just tap it over a little bit. Uh, then we'll look to see how close it is. It's not even close, what the hell do I do? They fit all that direction, okay. They didn't move at all. Loosen things up a little bit. And that one's loose now. Oh, I thought I had that tight. Those are tight. I think that's good. It's going to probably push the manifold out a little bit and make it uneven, but... So now when you put it on there, you can see how it looks pretty even now on both sides. The problem is when you put the O-rings in, it squishes the manifold and pushes it out like this, and... I can't spread the manifold enough to make it go in there correctly. So if I loosen up these base nuts here a little bit, I can probably get a little more rotation out of this motor and it'll, it'll help. 
line things up a little bit better. But overall, it's pretty close. I'm going to run it the way it is. I don't know if it'll get any better if I move it out or not. Okay, so usually what I do, I put the manifold on it, get it lined up. <clears throat> I can do my final torque on everything. When anything torques down, it squeezes down a little bit and changes things slightly, but not much I can do about that. These are intake clamps here. Hmm. So one of these has to come off. One can stay on, but one has to come off. See how squirts and be on there. Okay, the oil in here lets you torque it more for the same amount of torque and it won't strip out. You can torque the snot out of it and it takes a lot more to strip it to get more compression. One can be tight, one cannot be tight. Next problem is, does it clear the head or not? Probably not on this one. So this one here, we got a heavy overlap right here. It's going to keep the clamp from getting up under this area. Here's our clamp, just a big thick one anyway. So you can only rotate it so much. So it's going to hit right there on that side, and this one's going to hit right here. The clamp doesn't come in enough to tighten up. So that means you've got to put the thing away different angles or something. So we can try to put it together right here, but I don't think it's going to work right here. The torque will be limited by the the head. Let's see how much we got on this one. Yeah, this one might. You got to see what you got to work with. It looks like this one might work. If I can put them right here, they're easy to get to. You see, right now the heads are. You can't get the socket on there because the fin's in the way too. See, it's the whole thing just doesn't work. It looks cleanest this way, but they've got a lot of clearance issues. I'll try it on this side. I think the camera was dropping that whole time. Oh well. You get what you get. I'm tired. We're going to try it this way, see if it works. If it don't work, it doesn't work. I'm going to tighten this one up a little bit right now. Tighten these down, you got metal on metal. This clamp squeezes right against this metal, it squeezes right on the head, so you got metal on metal. And the o ring sits in the middle right there and seals, that's all it does is seal. If you have the rubber band style, the clamp's a lot bigger, the rubber, the rubber goes all the way across the whole face. When you tighten it down, you're squeezing rubber to metal, so you're always loose. You can't never make a rubber tight, it's always going to move around. I prefer these with this style, I mean the, uh, the O-ring style intake manifold design. The disadvantage of it is, is you can't make the port very big. You're very limited on the hole size. You cannot make it bigger. If you have a band, you can open that thing way the hell up. So if you want to get maximum power, you got to change it. But this is a better sealing design. And these don't wear out every six months like the other ones do. They hold up a lot better. Okay, so this one here. To put this one on here, all I do is wrap it around this corner like this here. <sighs> Turn. Go like that. So now it's held on. You slip this in the other side. 
here, line it up, put the o-ring down, wiggle it a little bit, and it pops in. Problem with this is it popped out too. We don't have room for the rubber in the o-rings in there, and there's not enough room. Heads too close together. Attempt to put this clamp together. It's really hard to get this in here. It doesn't want to line up. And we got no room here, so I don't know if I can even do it. But we're going to try it too. Oops, that can't go that way because it's fins in the way. It's got to go over that way. Jam back in there. Just pull the intake manifold out a little bit, which is going to undo the O-ring. Probably going to cut the O-ring in half. Yep. Didn't work. Can't get it all in there at one time. Clamps won't let you do it. I've been known to go in there and cut the heads away to make room, but I don't think this guy's going to want me to let do that too much. We'll try this one more time. I don't give up that easily. The ring is still in there. Pop a little bit too early. I think these heads are going to work in this location. I think we're going to have to redo everything here a little bit. Nothing lines up with the squat. Thing out. Ah, made it. Not tight. Okay. There's a line that sucks in there though. This one, on this one we have room for a socket, this side here we don't. Surprisingly, it's pulling in there, so it's halfway lined up. Okay. <sighs> There's nourishment in that drawer. 
chips. Yeah, screw it. I've gone this long without eating. Why well, worry about it now? That looks fairly straight. Okay, so I got the manifold halfway lined up. Very tight squeeze on everything. Clamps are going to get tight up under there. This one's jamming in already. This one needs to be rotated forward. It's already bottomed out on that one, so I have to loosen it up and slide it down. This needs to be way down here. Oop, down this way. So it's already bottomed out. It's going to start pushing the clamp manifold out next. And the alignment looks pretty good. It's one good thing about these metal on metal clamps. They things line up pretty nicely. You can see, I'd, if, I had man, if I had time to cut this manifold, I can make this transition a little bit better. But, uh, oh well, short on time. It'll just have to work like a stock bike. Okay, so. I need to pull the heads down the rest of the way now. So, what I'm going to do is... Um, Oh, I'm going to die is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tighten the head down. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm just going to tighten these things down. And hopefully i got room to get in here. These are going to torque down to 65 foot-pounds. I can't even read this thing right now. I'm too tired. Set on 30. Okay, on these type torque wrenches, if you're 90 degrees, it's accurate. If you're above it, you're low. Off. If you're low, you're low. 90 degrees, you're right on the money. This, you're going to be a little bit extra torque. If you go down like that, you get under torque. So I usually run them a little bit over torque like that. It fits in the machine. It fits in here better for getting to where you need to get to. And a lot of times you got no choice but to give it extra torque like this. You can't get in there. See the angle of that? You've got no choice. Okay, so these four here are tight, and I do the other side over here. We do the center one, which pulls it equally because it's just a third away, it's right in the middle. And then we do the ties, two side ones last. Okay, here we go. Oh, geez, I'm tired. Okay, that was 30. That was first. Next was 50, and then we go to 65. Oh. 
There's 50. Whew. Gets hard to hold it too. Got no, no way of holding on to anything. Force into the covers, you bend them, so don't do that. Something to get leverage to it. Yeah, I used to put a piece of pipe over it to, so you can hold on to the damn thing. Oh, shit, that's way more torque than it should be. It's not popping. Oh, stupid torque wrench pops when it feels like it. Oh, too damn tired to do this shit. Need leverage. Got no way of holding on to the damn thing. Too tired. Angles are bad. Stupid wrench ain't popping. Shit. Oh, hell, I don't know what to do. I know what I need, I just don't know how to do it. Screw it, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll leave it for later. That one's good. See, I'm way more torquing it on this one. Why is it not popping? Yeah, see, this thing way over torqued that thing. It didn't pop. This thing doesn't always pop. some trouble I'm way over torqued okay, okay last one 65 foot pounds. Ugh. Leverage. There's no leverage this way. No leverage. Jeez. now. It didn't pop. Should have popped. See, should have popped. I hit the T. 
tube. I already did that one. Guess I didn't. Good thing I went back and did it. Okay. Whew. Yeah, it's already over torqued. I knew it was over torqued. That's why I couldn't hold on to it. That's why I like dial torque wrenches. You can see what the hell's really happening. Stupid clickers, you don't know what the hell they're doing. Another one's a bad angle. I got all these bad angle ones around here. You know, don't stretch this way very well. Popped my back that time. I did. An easy one to get to. You got leverage. There we go. This one I should have already got. Yep. Alright, I'm torqued. 